Okay, back to Galatians chapter 5. Now, as we look at chapter 5, verses 16 through 26, we see a major topic or doctrine that is spoken of here, and it's the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. And I want us just to look at that because it's very important. Then I will hopefully have enough time to give you uh, the 15 commands of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. And they're not options. They are, but they're, they're really like in an intensive, um, like they're intensive verbs and nouns and they're uh, very strongly spoken of in the Bible. But we see in Galatians, and just by the way, if you want to get a great portion of Scripture on the Holy Spirit, Look at 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 16. It's really, it really talks about the discerning of the Spirit, the comparing of the Holy Spirit, um, and just the ministry of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through the end of the chapter. It's a great portion of Scripture, as there are many on the Holy Spirit. And I don't have to tell you, because obviously, being in Bible school, you know that we are... Just, just a little background. We are born of the Holy... By the way, the, the three things that give us liberty are the three things that we are born of. We are born of the Spirit, John 3, 3 through 7. We are saved by grace, Ephesians 2, 5 and 8. And we are born of the Word, 1 Peter 1, 23. So the very three things that we are born of and saved by, the Holy Spirit bringing the Word of grace, that's the Gospel, the very, the very aspect of our regeneration, our born again, is what will set us free. That's what set us free from the world and the flesh and the devil when we got saved. And so that, those three will be the, the sources of our liberty. Are you with me? Be the sources of our liberty. You're not going to find your liberty anyplace else. And these three things are found in the body. You find the word in the body. You find, the word, the, you find grace of God in the body. And you find the Holy Spirit in the body. So really, these are, these are key, not only to our regeneration, but our spiritual growth and liberty. Very th important foundations of the Christian life. Number one was the... Um, no, that wasn't number one, was it? The grace of God, Ephesians 2, 5, and 8. The Word of God, 1 Peter 1, 23 begotten of the Word, born of the Word, and born of the Spirit, John 3, 3 through 7. Okay? So that is the foundation of our, of, our, of our Christian life, the beginning. And so we don't run a different way. We don't build on something else. Liberty and growth are coming from those three sources. God's Word, God's grace, and God's Spirit. That's why Paul said in Acts 20, 32, I commend you to God. I give you over to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. So these three are the source of our, our regeneration, our being born of God, our deliverance from the world, the flesh, and the devil. That's, this is how we grow, and this is how we uh, are set free and given liberty. So being born again. Now, when you are born again, you are indwelt. John 14, 17 just a little background on the, the spiritual, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. We are indwelt by the Spirit. John 14, 17. We are regenerated. Titus 3, 5. Titus 3, 5. There's five, there's one indwelt, regenerated, anointed, sealed. There can be five things that happen when you're saved. Okay? Five things that happen when you're saved, not, necessi you know, not necessarily will I experience all of them uh, again later on, but indwelt, 1417 of John, okay? Regenerated, Titus 3, 5. Anointed, 1 John 2, 20 and 27. Are you with me? 1 John 2, 20 and 27 and 28. Sealed by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1.13 and 4.30. So in dwelt, regenerated, anointed, sealed, and then filled. F 
filled with the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 5.18. Okay? So just to get that before we go into Galatians. All right? Now, here's seven different words that are used in Galatians 5, 16 to 25. Are you with me? Thank you. Okay, number one, verse 16, walk in the Spirit. Now, this is also used in verse 25, but that will be my seventh point because it's a different word. This word for walk is P-E-R-I-P-A-T-E-O. P-E-R-I-P-A-T-E-O. P-A-T-E-O. And it means have a manner of life in the Spirit. May the manner and the quality of the life you live be in the, in the person of the Holy Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. So the Galatians were not only people that were told about grace and the finished work, and the promises of God in chapter 3 and chapter 4, but they were, they were given the importance of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Lewis Perry Shaver does a great job on his chapters on the Holy Spirit. In 52, the book 52, I, I think 52 major Bible themes should be a book for every Christian to read. It is the best, most concise survey of doctrine booklet on planet Earth, bar none. Somebody tried to introduce another book into our survey of doctrine classes in Africa, and I told them that maybe they should go home. Because we're using Schaefer Walver. It's, it's one book. You know, you know the, there's the eight-volume set? Then there's a two-volume set. But the one, I, I give the one to every pastor in Africa. They get a Thompson chain, a concordance, and 52 major Bible themes. 80% of the pastoral exam comes from that book. Pastor Stevens, uh, and taking, it, taking the pastoral exam, you can see that most of it, and the one that I took, 185 questions, came from Lewis Sperry Schaefer. You can see it all, and it's very scriptural, biblical, doctrinal, and an awesome book. So I don't know if they have it here. You can, I don't even know if they are printing them anymore. I'm not sure. You can buy them used, but it is an awesome book. I read it at least twice a year through, just to keep my mind focused on the major doctrines of the Bible, the Trinity, um, salvation, assurance of salvation, the, Holy, the person of the Spirit, uh, there's eschatology in there, there's so much in there, in that book, so really it is a key book. I can't imagine a, a pastor not reading that book, not having that understanding of that book. So walk in the Spirit, may your manner and quality of life be the life of the Holy Spirit. Number two, in 5.17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Okay, the word lust is not the way we always think it is. It's epithumio. E-P-I-T-H-U-M-E-O. E-P-I-T-H-U-M-E-O. And this is what it means. What's in your mind? The word epi, in, thumeo, mind. So, the mind of the Spirit. 517 is the mind of the Spirit. Do we have the Spirit's mind? Obviously, we can't walk in the Spirit, peripateo, without having the mind of the Spirit. So, do we, what's on the Spirit's mind? When I talk to people, when I minister, when I'm thinking about tests and trials and problems, things are happening in my life, do I have the mind of the Spirit? Just having a good mind is useless. It's more dangerous than a bad mind. Because a good human mind is more, in, is more likely to be a contest against the spiritual mind. Doing a good thing like the United Nations. You know, clothing and feeding, and nothing wrong with those things. But those are good works motivated by man, not by God. What's the mind of the Spirit? What's the Spirit's mind? I, you know, you may not like what I'm going to say right now, but I don't know what God's mind is. Does he allow 30,000 children in Somalia to die so they don't grow up to be Muslims? And they go to heaven instead? How do I know? I don't know. Uh, what's the mind of the Spirit? 
You know, we, we think about it and whatnot, and it, it's a sad thing, it's horrible. You think about the compassion, you, you can't stand to see it, and you really, it really motivates you to whatever, to pray and to do what you can do, and not, nothing wrong with that. But do I know the mind of God? What's the mind of God on this, you know? When I looked at, when I looked at the cross with many people, what's, what's, what an offense. He's crucified between two criminals. What's the mind of the Spirit? What's the Spirit's mind? What's on the Spirit's mind? What I do with my life, am I thinking with the mind of the Spirit, or is it just my own way of thinking? What's on the Spirit's mind? You know, obviously I thought Galatians chapter 6 was what I was supposed to do tonight. Spent all those hours and I found out at 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock when I wasn't even feeling so hot and ready for a nap because I hadn't slept in four days uh, to lie down and close my eyes for a while that I'm in the wrong chapter. <clears throat> and I said... That must be what's on the Spirit's mind, chapter 5. You know, my mind was on chapter 6. I thought, well, what's wrong with teaching chapter 6 tonight and 5 next week? And then Holy Spirit said, nope. Nope, be quiet. Human thinking, wrong. Nope, bye. Because he didn't put chapter 6 in front of chapter 5. In the Bible, what's on the Spirit's mind? Not really, having the mind of the Holy Spirit. Is it the mind of the Holy Spirit for me? To, I was thinking about going someplace on Monday. Is it, I said to my wife, I don't know. What's the mind of the Spirit? I'm not going to just do something to do something. What's on the Spirit's mind? What's on the mind? What, my outreach, what's on the Spirit's mind? In my marriage, what's on the Spirit's mind? In my relationship with God, you know what was on the Spirit's mind? I said to Pastor Steve Murillo, I said, I'm leaving at 7 o'clock. We're cutting the grass at 7.30 in the morning this morning. I don't care how tired I am. And we got up and we... <laughs> We cut the grass in an hour and a half. That was what's on the Spirit's mind. Cut the grass now. I don't care what's on. Doesn't matter what was on your mind. <laughs> You're just there to co-labor. <laughs> and you do. It's awesome. What's on the Spirit's mind? You know, don't pray about this anymore. This thorn in the flesh. This is what's on the Spirit's mind. Stop praying about that. You know what? Sometimes it's just good to stop praying about something. And maybe that will say that you trust God. Some people pray, 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 pray. 20 years I've been praying for this one kid. How about I just give him over to God? Give him to God. You know what? And stop thinking that it's your prayers that are going to deliver him. It's God who's going to deliver him. He's the one you're praying to. Hello? No, sometimes I've seen things leave my life that I never prayed about. I gave up praying and God said, okay, because your praying was a little bit of striving for what you want. Huh? What's on the Spirit's mind, Sicily? <laughs> what's on the Spirit's mind, right? China. What's on the Spirit's mind? It doesn't matter what's on my mind or what's on her mind or what's on his mind, what's on my kid's mind, or what's, what's, in, what's on the mind of the Spirit. What's on the Spirit's mind? Some people that had their, in their mind, they wanted to be the pastor of the church here. What was on the Spirit's mind? Who cares what you, what you think? Who cares what you think? Who should, who shouldn't, or whatever. What, I, I told some people in, uh, in Africa, I said, by the way, I said, you, you're getting married, you never even came to tell your grandfather. I said, we don't do that, do we? Is that a good idea? You're going to get married without telling uh, your grandfather, right, Andrea? Huh? You know the case, right? And he finally came with the girl and said, uh, you know, I said, I'm not, I'm not like forcing that, but boy, it's interesting, huh? Trained and raised and what's on the spirit's mind? Being on the Spirit's mind, you should be sitting in this front chair right here, not standing at the back door, even though you've been, you're late because you want to get something to eat. Huh? And you never even changed your shorts. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> Isn't that good? Huh? What's on the Spirit's mind? Right? Like, I, I've got all kinds of people that want to tell me what I should do about my, my, my limp and my leg and my knee. Guess what? Thank you. But I want to know what's on the Spirit's mind. What if the Spirit said, I want you to be like that the rest of your life? Did you know that Jacob walked with a limp for 50 years? I traced out from Genesis 32 to the end of his life. 50 years he had a limp. And he had a staff. What's on the Spirit's mind? What's on the Spirit's mind? We had a great time. I was standing on stage with Pastor Bamuni. He has crutches. Pastor Arheen, he has a cane. Pastor Morty, he has a cane. There was five of us. I thought, this is, these are the able people in the ministry. It was so good. And you know what somebody said to me? Like, you coming to Africa, walking with that cane, has done more than you can imagine in my life. 
It means you are determined. You are determined to do this. Well, no matter what it is, that ain't going to stop me. That's not going to stop me, you know. Oh, well, I don't know how I can get around. Some guy said to me, come out the way, you need a wheelchair? I said, I need more than that. He goes, what do you need? I said, I need you to get saved. He goes, sit down, tell me. So he wheeled me all through the, he wheeled me all the way through the airport, and I said, you need to be born again so you can walk with God, not sit in a chair your whole life. No, it was just good. Yeah. And anyway, you know, a woman said to me, um, gee, are you nervous about plane flights? I'm a little bit nervous about the flights. I said, why would I be nervous if the Holy Spirit's in me? She says, what? I said, the Holy Spirit, is he in you? Are you born again? She goes, well, I'm not sure. I said, not being sure means when this plane goes down, you're going to hell. She goes, don't say that, plane going down. I said, I don't care. I'm just telling you what could happen. You need to get, we're going to pray right now that you get saved. Oh, whatever, you know, it's just interesting. Just an interesting time. What's on the what? What's on the spirit's mind? on the spirit's mind. Well, I think that, that person is the person I should marry. Are you sure? What's on the spirit's mind? I think I should disciple that. You know what's on the spirit's mind? Discipleship. Discipling people, not just hanging around church your whole life. Going to church three times a week. What about the next step? What about saying, I want to I want to disciple one person this year and really invest in them. One or two people. Grab a person and disciple them. What's on the spirit's mind? What's the mind of the spirit? Number three, the war of the spirit. It talks about the war here. Lust against. The flesh is against the spirit. The spirit's against the flesh. Romans chapter 7 and 8 are perfect examples of that. You read about the war that Paul went through. There's a war between the flesh and the... Have you ever noticed there's a little war going on in you? Huh? Yeah. Come on, don't sit there like you're naive. Like, you know, boy, not me. I'm just, I, you're perfect positionally, but I, I'm talking about your experience, brother. Yeah. There's a war going on. There's a war. When I thought about that five days of travel back from the desert, there's a war going on. Why don't I just fly? And the spirits fly, and then you miss all the fellowship with the eight guys in your car. Four days of fellowship around dust, dirt, bad water, uncooked food, and no toilets. That's awesome. Fellowship. Fellowship. Awesome. Get back and you need to... My wife said that she ran my clothes through the washer three times today. Every time I did it, it came out, it was brown. I said, that's exactly what it is. It's dirt. It's Sahara dirt. Hallelujah. Scrub my head with a rake when I go home. <laughs> no, that's, it's just awesome, really. It really is. Yeah. I was in, I was, this is a funny story. I got to tell it. Uh, it's about the war. I'm getting ready to go to a convention. There's 500 people in Bogotanga. So I'm, uh, the shower is in a bathtub. So I'm in there, and all of a sudden, I, I started to slip, and I grabbed the shower thing and the, and the pole, and it snapped. Cut my arm wide open. I went out of the bathtub on my left hand and my side. Blood is everywhere. I mean, it was, I was bleeding everywhere. I, the whole towel had blood. And I said, shut up, devil, because this is going to stop, and I'm preaching tonight. It was like an hour before the message. And I thought, you know what? I don't give a flying rip about some stupid blood. It's a war. It was a war. You know, I'm thinking like, what a time for this to happen. <laughs> no, you start thinking like, you know, it's, it's a war. This is a war, you know. And I, you know, I like the term old soldiers. There's a lot of people that are like just, I don't know what they are, Christians. They're like babies on a playground. I don't, I wish we could change the music here. It's a little too cold. Uh, I don't understand why I can't get a closer park in place. I might find another church. You know what? Just go then. Because people like you are not going to help this ministry. No, ba little kids on playgrounds. You know, playing with their toys. Oh, look. 
Duck. It's Donald Duck, you know? <laughs> well, why don't you duck from a demon? That's the best. That's the way I like about ducking. It's ducking from a demon. No, really. Seriously, like, we're soldiers. We are called to be what in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4? A good soldier. I fought the good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. Henceforth, there is later for me a crown for all them who love is appearing. Soldiers. This is, Christianity needs soldiers. They really need it's soldiers that are going to walk with God. It's amazing. I was talking to this blind man in Togo. He's, he just got ordained. He's a four-year graduate. Has a church of 30 already. I mean, he can't see. But he's pastoring a church in Togo. That's unbelievable. He got all A's in Bible school just to memorize, memorize knowing what they said. I said, this guy, and him and his wife, they're both blind, and they're, and they're pastoring a church in the village. Soldiers. Pastor, I was talking to Pastor Christian. He said, uh, I said, did you go to the doctor this week? He says, yeah. I said, tell me what your cholesterol was. He says, 480. I said, how about your blood pressure? He said, 260. He said, I've been like that my whole life. If I die, I die. I think it's, he's 72. You know, he don't care. Now, you can say that's crazy. You know, you know you're know, not taking care of yourself. Well, you tell him. I ain't tell him. I told him. Like, you, know, you ought to change like, the way. He will change the way I eat after 72 years. I said, I don't have, do you have any money to help me eat better? I said, not really. <laughs> No, but he's 72 and he's still going strong. He said, my father was 105. And he said he had worse blood pressure than me and worse cholesterol than me. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Pastor Christian. Excuse me for breathing. You know? Then I got Pastor Morty. He's got two churches. He's 80 years old. He's still pastoring. He's walking with a cane, pastoring. 80 years old. He says to me, I want to know, uh, I'm going to plant a second church. I'm like, at 80, he's looking for a second church. I'm like, thank you, Caleb. You know? These guys are what? These guys are soldiers. These guys are like soldiers. They're like, man, it's, it's an anointing just to be near them. It's like you can't believe the kind of people that God has raised up. So war of the spirit says, I'm the one that can experientially defeat the flesh, the world, and the devil. There's a war, and the Holy Spirit is the commander-in-chief. Not some weirdo, some White House. Sorry, don't want to get political. Holy Spirit's my commander in chief. Amen? Yes, he is. I know, really, soldiers, young men. I said to one man, I said, I'm just testing him. I said, How are you making it in this city, planting a church on $45 a month? Because after we send them 50, the wire takes five. He goes, I'm doing fine. I said, what do you eat? He said, I eat when I can. I said, his name is Pastor Oh Drew. I eat when I can. And that's a great statement. I, I love these guys. Like, they, you know, they ain't, it ain't about like, hey, he said, hey, he said ain't I asked him, do you want to come on the, on the trip? He says, I said, I got room for the van. I said, I got no food money. He goes, who needs to eat? I'm like, okay, <laughs> get in the van. <laughs> I like that statement, who needs to eat? That's awesome. If I eat, I eat. If I don't, I don't. It's fine with me. Those are what? Soldiers. Those are soldiers. And that, that's what we need. So there's a war. But the war is not for kids. The war is not for, like, you know, just babies. The war is for soldiers. And we war in the spirit. Paul was a general in God's army. I like what they call Dr. Stevens of Pakistan. They call him the general. I got letters from the Pakistani believers. And they, they listen to pastor's classes. Uh, there's 110 students watching Romans uh, and, and watching classes from ABD. And they referred to him, they referred to me and Pastor Shell as captains, but he's the general. I thought, that's amazing. They said, it's so sad to her that the general passed on to heaven. No, that, I mean, that's how they think, Pakistan. You know, they're in a war. They're in a Muslim Hindu country, and they're Christians. They're in a war. It's a war. Number four. 518, led of the Spirit. Chapter 5, verse 18 says, but if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. See, the spiritual life is what delivers you from the law and works and circumcision. Being led by the Holy Spirit. Am I led? What outreach am I on? Do I pick an outreach because I like the neighborhood? Do I pick an outreach because I like the leader only? Do I pick an outreach because I'm led of the Spirit? Am I led by the Holy Spirit? 
Somebody said to me, when you go down to the market, there's 30 people that come. When you're not there, there's five. You know what? I'll fix that. That's wrong. Are you, what are you being led by me? Are you being led by the Spirit there? Are you led by the Gospel and the Holy Spirit to disciple people in that market area? Or are you, are you following a person? Celebrityism. How's that sound? Go because God tells you, not because somebody's there. It's ridiculous. Anyway. Oh, we won't go any further. Letter of the Spirit, right? Letter of the Spirit. 522. The fruit of the Spirit. 522, the fruit of the Spirit. The nine fruits or love and then the eight responses of love. But this is the fruit of the Spirit. The Spirit produces fruit. If I say I'm Spirit-filled, is there love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, meekness, temperance, long? Is, is that there? If that's there, if I'm, if I'm a spiritual person, and we're growing in that, and there's a measure of that, but I want to bear fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. And by the way, God is interested in bearing fruit in me before he bears fruit, fruit through me. A lot of people are always like thinking about, like you know, well, there's no fruit there. Maybe God wants to bear fruit in you before you can be used to bear fruit anyplace else. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> That's why Bible school is important. That's why being around the body is important because God is working in me, bearing fruit in me before I can bear fruit in discipleship or in winning souls. So I say, God, I, I am, I, can I be the one you concentrate on for the fruit of the Spirit. Chapter 5, verse 25. The life of the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, having the life of the Spirit, the life of the Holy Spirit. In Galatia, it's the life of the Spirit. It's the walk of the Spirit, the mind of the Spirit, the war of the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, bearing the fruit of the Spirit, and having the life of the Holy Spirit. Then finally, number 7, walk in the Spirit. But this is a different word. It's not peripateo. This is the word stoikion. I'll spell it. S-T-O-I-C-H-E-I-O-N. S-T-O-I-C-H-E-I-O-N. And this is a different word for walk. This means staying in the principles of the Spirit, the basics of the Spirit, the rule of the Spirit, the order of the Spirit. It's a very, it's a very interesting word in the New Testament Greek. The rank of the Spirit. So the basis of the Spirit, the principles of the Spirit, the rank of the Spirit, the order of the Spirit, the rule of the Spirit, and the duty of the Spirit. It's a very interesting word. Different than the other word, walk, manner of life. This really breaks down an order and a rank and a way of doing things in a, in a, in a particular way based upon the principles. In other words, here's the rudiments, the foundation of the spiritual life, and I build on them. I build on them. So walk in the Spirit. And that's an awesome portion of Scripture on the life of the Spirit. Now, let me give you the 15 commands of the Holy Spirit, and we shall close this class in five minutes. Maybe. I'll just give you the verses. Study these verses. They're very interesting. Okay? Number one, Acts 7.55. Stephen says you always resist the Holy Spirit. He said that to the Jewish leaders. You do always resist the Holy Spirit. You resist Him. And some people have made a lifetime habit of resisting the Holy Spirit. And because God protects believer priesthood, nobody knows except God and the person. Can you imagine, like, if you talked me into never going to Africa, I would have been resisting the Holy Spirit because you talked me into it. There's a lot of people that don't take the step overseas or to be a pastor or to go forward with God and they are, no one knows it, it's between them and God, but they are resisting the Holy Spirit. God, they, uh, God's called me to be a Christian businessman, liar. God's called you to be a preacher. God's called me to be a preacher, liar. God's called you to be a Christian businessman. See, I, I just talking about resisting the Holy Spirit. I'm just saying, I'm resisting. Is it not me? That's not for me. 
You know what? Just saying that, you're not even leaving an opening for God. That's not for me. That's not for me. I told Dr. Stevens that. I, you've heard the story. He said to me, God's called you to be a preacher. I said, I used to trust your discernment, but from now on, I'm going to be questionable. I said, I will never pastor and never speak to people. I was wrong. He was right. Resisting. The, I was resisting the Holy Spirit in my call. Resisting going to Bible school full time. Resisting the mission field. Resisting ministering the body. Resisting giving it all instead of 90%. Some people are very good at, at calculating how much they're going to lay down. Okay, I'm going to lay down 80% of my life. Yeah, the other 20s for me. And, that, and God says, great, because I can't even look at you. Because it's not presenting your body a living sacrifice. Okay? Resisting the Holy Spirit. Minister to your wife. You know how many phone calls I had today asking me where I was? None of your business where I was. I was with my wife who I hadn't seen in 23 days. Do you mind? Is that okay? Like, when's the last time you went 23 days? Or you're out five months a year out of the thing, you know? And I, I know. Where are you? How come you're not in the office? Oh, thank you. Thank you for respecting my believer priesthood. I wouldn't go to the, if I went to the office today, I would be resisting the Holy Spirit. I stayed home, opened my Bible, spent time with my wife, my granddaughter, my daughter, and I arrested, and I, and I thought, and, I, and whatever. If I'd done anything else, it would have been what? Resisting the Holy Spirit, even Christian activity. You going to work today? No. What is work? According to your structural procedure and your mental capacity to discern the advance of human tradition based upon demonic infiltration of your mind? <laughs> Whatever. I, I don't say that to people. I just know like, how to answer that kind of thing. Okay, what was it? Quench the Holy Spirit. First Thessalonians 5.19. Quench it means to put the fire out, baby. You're too old to be doing this. Oh, thank you for quenching the Spirit. Huh? Well, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? Quench, quench, quench. I'll call you Mr. and Mrs. Quench. <laughs> Quenchers. Yeah. Quench, 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 quench. You know? Jeez, I don't know. You know what somebody said to me? Well, I don't understand. Like, you came to Africa. Like, look at, I mean, you can hardly walk. Like, what about your knee and hip? I said, when's the last time you saw my knee and hip breach? <laughs> it's my mouth and my mind, idiot. I didn't say that. But I thought that because it's satanic. And my mouth... My mouth and my mind do the preaching. Is that correct? Yeah. Not my hip and my knee. That's the deal. You mean your knee. Whatever. You say it enough and I, I, I don't care. God. I saw a guy in the airport the other day. He had one leg. The other leg had, it was metal walking around. What do they call those? Yeah. He's walking around perfectly smiling and I was talking to him. And So what? Big deal. One leg. None. Whatever. Well, it doesn't matter. Quench the Holy Spirit. Number three, insult him. Hebrews 10.29. You know what it says when you do despite? It means you insult the Holy Spirit. Remember when the guy got up? Oh, I, I always don't like to tell this story on the internet. So block this off the internet. Guy got up and he said, <laughs> under the influence of demons, the message of grace is from Satan and Dr. Stevens is from the devil and God killed him on the spot. I thought, well, good enough for him. He insulted the Holy Spirit. This happened in Uganda. Right in church. Whew. Have a good day, wherever you may be. Watch out. I'm not trying to take, make, scare anybody, but I'll tell you, I've seen some interesting things in Africa. Five men conspired against me. And they went to court and they deported me from the country, these five men, and within one year, all five were dead. They died of mysterious diseases, too. One guy's whole body blew up with elephantitis, and he, it was unbelievable. I don't wish that on anybody, but like, I'm just going to tell you, it's not me. You're insulting. When you insult the grace message and the Holy Spirit and the work of God, watch out what you say. It's dangerous. Number four, grieve the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4.30. Grieve means to, he suffers loss of fellowship with you. Grieving him. Grieving the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4.30. So 
in all reality, when I sin, God doesn't see the sin, but God knows there's no fellowship because of sin. You think God looks at everybody's sin? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard Christians say. Habakkuk 1.13 2 Corinthians 5.21, he who knew no sin. He knew what? Okay, his eyes are too pure to behold sin. He's not beheld iniquity in Jacob. God doesn't see sin. It would be in his mind. He knows I'm in sin because there's no fellowship. But can you imagine if he, all of our sins and the sins of every Christian on planet earth were in God's mind? How would he be able to think? It's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous way of thinking, people that believe that. He just knows that there's no fellowship and the grieving of the person of the spirit. Suffer loss is what lupeo means. Grieve is lupeo, L-E-P-L-U-P-E-O. Suffer loss, no fellowship. Next, vex the Holy Spirit, Isaiah 63.10. They vexed or rebelled against the Holy Spirit. Next, lie to the Holy Spirit, Acts 5 verse 3. Ananias and Sapphira had not just a one-time deal. They were constantly lying to the Holy Spirit. Just because th people think they died because they just didn't, they, 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 they lied about the money for the land. They had a habitual lifestyle of lying. And God said, well, enough is enough. Forget the Holy Spirit. John 14, 26. The Bible talks how much, how often we ought to remember Holy Spirit bringing things to remembrance. One of the things we, we have to be careful of is, is to forget the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Acts 5.9, the next one, tempt the Holy Spirit. Put him to the test. Some people are very good at that. They just keep tempting him and testing him and testing him. And one day, God is very patient and very loving, but one day, something takes place. Acts 5.9. Acts 11.17, withstand the Holy Spirit. Peter was withstanding, then decided, I, sh I can't withstand the Holy Spirit. Withstanding the Spirit. And then one that is not for us, but one that is for unbelievers, they blaspheme the Spirit. The Spirit brings the person of Christ and the work of the cross, and they blaspheme it in Matthew 12, 31. They say no to the person and the work of the cross. That's blaspheming the Spirit. Now, five positive commands. One, we, are, we already talked about some of them. Number one, walk in the Spirit, Galatians 5, 16, and 25. Number two, live in the Spirit, 5, 25, we talked about. Number three, filled with the Spirit, Ephesians 5, 18. Number four, led by the Spirit, Romans 8, 14. And number five, obey the Holy Spirit, Acts 5, 32. I'll say them again. Walk, you've already, I've already talked about these some of them. Walk in the Spirit, Galatians 5, 16 and 25. Live in the Spirit, Galatians 5, 25. Fill with the Spirit, Ephesians 5, 18. Led by the Spirit, Romans 8, 14. And obey the Spirit, Acts 5, 32. Now, one last thought. I'm sorry it's going over, but I want to just talk about this one last point here. And that's in Ephesians chapter um, 5 a very controversial point that people struggle with when he talks about the 17 works of the flesh Ephesians I mean, I'm sorry Galatians I'm sorry Galatians 5 19 to 21 he gives you 17 manifestations of the flesh all right I'm not going to go into them I want us to look at verse 21 I have told you in the middle of 21 I have told you in the time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. People like have a lot of problem with that verse. But let me tell you what the do says. The do, the word do is prato. P-R-A-T-T-O. Prato. And this is very important. Prato. P-R-A-T-T-O. This is what it means. They who have a life of activity, they that perform continually, they that are habitually and repeatedly practicing this. They who have a manner of life. They who do such things. This is very intense. 
It's not a one-time deal or somebody falls or whatever, or uh, maybe, I don't know what, how, how many, what happened with Samson, how many things happened with him. But this word, do, prato, means they perform it continually, they habitually repeat it and practice it, they commit it as a manner of their life, it's the course of all their activity. It's a lifestyle of these things, a life a lifestyle of idolatry, fornication, adultery, uncleanness, lasciviousness, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation. See, Saul committed, was involved with the witchcraft, but it wasn't his whole life. You follow me? So people say, well, Saul didn't go to heaven. Yes, he did. He went to heaven. It wasn't a lifetime practice. And look at this thing. Re emulations, uh, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This is prato. This word is very important. Because some of you will say, they're envious, they're going to hell. Right? It says envy, right? As much as murder, hatred, adultery, fornication, it says envy, hatred. You ever hate anybody? For a period of, for, for a half a day or an hour? I won't answer. Drinking, revelings, okay, all, wrath, ang, you know, this kind of wrath, lasciviousness, having no purpose. But this key is the word do. They that practice continually and habitually perform them repeatedly and exercise and commit them as a course of activity and a manner of life, they're the ones that will not go to heaven. Amen? Hey, okay, Father, thank you for this class tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed.